Hey guys, uh, I just did a video and at the end of the video, I just briefly showed you something about the, about the, um, the Pandora papers. And I just wanted to show you the distance between Cuba. Let me see. We got Cuba right here. I don't know where the Virgin Islands is. Um, okay, Cuba is very close to Florida, right? Here's the Bahamas, but where's the Virgin Islands? Puerto Rico. Oh, there they are. Okay, so Cuba's here, all right, which is where Gitmo is. We got British Virgin Islands right here. And then we've got Panama right here. Okay, so you just go boom. And then Jamaica's right here. So they hide a lot of like FDA trials and they're, they're doing this with offshore accounts uh, and accounts um, that go through big, big people in government, right? So if you want to hide something, I think there's a different kind of jurisdiction for islands. So this is uh, British Virgin Islands. But there's also, I think there's something else where there's half of it belongs to the United States and the other half belongs to Great Britain. Uh, let me see. This thing looks like a giant tree bark. I don't even know. I mean, maybe they just, you know, draw this. I mean, this looks like a mouth with like, An eye. I mean, you can see all kinds of. Th this looks like a alligator head. I think they're just drawing this stuff anymore. I I don't think it's just actual, you know. But anyway, okay, let's go look at the the um, Pandora Papers. Now there was a release a few years ago, I think in 2017, called the Panama Papers. And that all went through one provider, and this one goes through multiple providers. So let's see. It's 11.9 million records arrived from 14 different offshore service, services firms in a jumble of files and formats, even ink on paper, presenting a massive data management challenge. Okay, so... You know, I, my theory about this has to do with McAfee because McAfee kept promising that the the dump was going to come from different sources, and um, I don't know where the dump did come from or when it came from, but um, I never saw anything from the McAfee dump, and I. As much as I, I sometimes think McAfee might be an asset of some kind, I do also think he has information and he doesn't want uh, the government to continue doing what they've been doing to people. So I do believe he's going to release something, whether he's an asset or not. And um, I, 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 you know, I mean, that's just, he said it would happen. So, but I still haven't seen one thing, even though he keeps saying he's going to do it. So then I saw this. So it's got 330 politicians, 2.94 terabyte data trove exposes the offshore secrets of wealthy elites from more than 200 countries and territories. These are people who use the ta who use tax and secrecy havens to buy property. Okay, you know what I think property is and hide assets. Many avoid taxes and worse. They include more than 330 politicians, 130 Forbes billionaires, as well as celebrities, fraudsters, drug dealers, royal family members, <laughs> and leaders of religious groups. Okay. Now, this is just telling you what it is. It, it, you can find it at the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. You can look at investigations right here. Panama Papers, the Rogue Offshore Finance Industry, the Paradise Papers, 
implant files. I, I, I didn't even look at this. What's this? Implant files. Uh, oh, that's something else. Anyway, the Paradise Papers are another version of this. Um, let me see. It's weird. I, I clicked on it, but I can't see it. Trump, Russia, links, and piggy banks of the wealthiest 1%. Um, explore the influences, influencers, Donald Trump's allies in the Paradise Papers. Now, you guys, I know that you know that I try to think with my full brain and uh, intuition. I use anything at my disposal. Trump still did something to the system. <laughs> he noticed that the White House was, you know, whether USA was a corporation or not, was being run by a foreign entity. So really, he didn't have the, you know, he didn't have the standing really to be in the White House on U.S. soil, because then he would really be the president of a different, com you know, like, not of America itself, but of the foreign corporation. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, um, I'm not so concerned about his money, but if you want, uh, you can look here, you know. Explore the influencers. Offshore Trove exposes this. Paradise Papers. Here. So this again says 13.4 million leaked files. Um, which seems to be a very similar amount to what's been released in the new papers. Let's go back. Pandora Papers. Oh, 11.9 million records. Um, so we got, we got British Virgin Island sea, seashells, Hong Kong, Belize, Panama, South Dakota, and other secrecy jurisdictions. Okay, I don't know why South Dakota, um, but I did post a video on BitChute, um, and I did post something just kind of explaining what was going on, and you guys can find it on my Patreon and it's not blocked. Like you can see it. You can listen to it. Um, I tried to do it on a couple of different forums on Buzzsprout, but people were saying they couldn't click. So I just want you to know like what's going on. Uh, so when I went down and looked at this, uh, let's see. The companies, foundations, and trusts were all registered between 1971 and 2018. The records show providers and clients shifting their business from one jurisdiction to another after investigations and resulting rule changes. Okay, I mean, they, they've done this the whole time. So keep going. You, you, you can read about the people involved on their site. Um, which U.S. states have the most trust? South Dakota has <laughs> a lot. Okay, trusts, remember, um, my parents said they had a trust under my last name, which is also an internment camp called, uh, w with that same exact name. All right. So they're, they're really using these trusts to, um, do things where people are property, people are chattel. Um, the records that I found said chattel right on them. So they are, they're selling uh, properties and then hiding what they're actually selling in the trusts. Okay. So then you go down here and you can 
look over here at, I mean, this is a pretty interesting thing. Filter providers by name, office location, or jurisdiction. So you can go, I guess, to British Virgin Islands, but when I tried, it didn't really work. But you go down here, Demetrios Demetriades. If you followed my other channel, Demetrios Demetriades is a trauma surgeon, the head of the trauma department um, with um, Ken Giannaba at USC. So that is a trust. And then I found um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's real name is Ferdinand something. I can't remember his last name. Um, so because he was involved with my father, I looked up his name when I was starting to look up documents and he had a large transfer of money that I think went through this. But if you look up this name, Demetrios Demetriades, let's see if I can do it. Demetrios Demetriades, USC. Uh, th this is a person, USC. Um, he kept coming up on the documents because he's at the head, the chief of the division of trauma emergency surgery and such. So I found this document that said, and I don't remember if I found it or this other girl that was helping me look found it, but the document said the trauma files are kept in this like lock box at the facility at Keck. So it's the same name. All right. So I don't know why they use LLCs to hide everything, but that is very weird that I knew this name from before from my research, and then I saw it today on this. So I just want to show you that. Um, and then there was something else I found about, like, when you're a prisoner of war, they're not supposed to, you know, whoever's, wherever you're being held in a country... They're not supposed to refuse medical care and they're not supposed to, when the war ends, they need to repatriate you immediately back to your country of birth. And obviously nothing's happening. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's see, Demetrios, Demetriades or dad law provider headquartered in Cyprus had one or more Russians as beneficial owners. All right. Now, what's weird is this one document I found. Let me find it. A lot of the banks went through Switzerland. Uh, not banks, but a lot of these accounts that they're talking about went through Swiss Switzerland. So, again, um, I tried to go into the ICRC. Remember, the International Committee of the Red Cross is, is the the only committee allowed to visit the Guantanamo detainees, Guantanamo detainees, all right, captured combatants and civilians under the authority of an adverse party are entitled to respect for their lives, dignity, personal rights, and convictions. They shall be protected against all acts of violence and reprisals. They shall have the right to correspond with their families and to receive relief. Uh, you guys know how many times I've brought lawsuits against people for stealing property, stealing copyright, stealing, um, you know, every time I, I bring a case, they throw it out. So I do have a case right now um, in court. But anyway, again, corporal punishment or cruel and degrading treatment, mental, physical, and torture. I mean, this is what they're doing, though. I mean, this is what they're doing. So they're claiming no but they're also, I believe, keeping donors um, enslaved. So I, I, I think that this organization is part of the issue. Because even if you're a very rare donor, you should still have legal rights and not be tortured <laughs> on American soil or any soil. Uh, as a war, you know, prisoner of war or interned at all. <laughs> 